So how are you? I'm I'm doing okay. Um, today is the you know we have a U.S. holiday called Thanksgiving, and um, all the families get together and uh, we share a, a, a kind of a meal together. Uh, so today's like the day after Thanksgiving, but our family's running a day behind, so we're meeting up today. But <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. But uh, could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, I noticed you study aerospace medicine, uh, but can you tell me, um, you know, where you live and and what got you into aerospace medicine, and um, just uh, uh, you know a little bit more about uh, about yourself? Yeah, sure. It's ASM. I'm a medical third year medical student here in Egypt. And I'm very interested in uh, traveling to space and in space medicine especially. And uh, my journey started from, uh, I think, two years ago. I, I was very interested in space medicine and started and I, I already started to uh, study this specialization. And right now I'm a researcher in this uh, in this uh, in this point or in this field. So yeah, I like I like just to study uh, how the astronauts live in this in this hard life, uh, uh, such as traveling to moon or traveling to Mars. How they live without oxygen, without uh, under this different pressure, and how do they live without water? Uh, yeah, it's so hard. I think. Oh. What are some of the more surprising things you've discovered about uh, the effects on the human body from uh, space travel and uh, maybe ways that we can uh, help protect people? The most surprising me that um, they drink water <laughs> because there is no, uh, no, they drink uh, their urine because there is no water uh, approved. So they, they drink the urine and recycle the urine and they drink it as a water. It was one of the things that usually surprised me. And um, yeah, uh, travel, uh, living, um, living abroad is, is so hard. Um, I think till now we can, uh, NASA or the whole space agencies around the world, we didn't till now we didn't reach or we didn't find solutions uh, for the whole um, problems that face astronauts. Um, yeah, there is a lot of risks that may happen to them through, during traveling there. Um, so hard. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, so you live in Egypt, right? Yeah, in um, Cairo. In, uh, in Cairo, which I guess is right there on the Nile, so you'll have a source of water. But uh, other than the, the places along the, the major rivers, uh, is desert in uh, Egypt, right? Uh, what? I'm sorry. Can you say that? Oh, in Egypt, uh, aren't there a lot of places where water is in short demand, a uh, short supply? Uh, because uh, there's a lot of desert areas. Yeah, there is a lot of desert areas. Yeah, but the Nile River um, can, uh, you know, uh, all of Egypt drink from Nile River. And some of the desert, some uh, places in Egypt where is desert, there is a desert. Uh, they can they can extract the water from the ground. I was wondering, uh, you know, in a lot of places in the world, uh, drinking water is in short supply as well. Do you think uh, this technology that the astronauts are using to be able to recycle their own water uh, could be useful here on Earth? Oh, <laughs> even if, if it could be useful, I will not. <laughs> I will not agree that we here on Earth can use this uh, solution because there is a lot of side effects from uh, drinking water. Um, but till now, uh, what no one astronauts ha had or get side effects from drinking urine, but uh, recycled urine. But uh, it's a little bit hard to um, to use it here on Earth because it needs a lot of. Um, and of technology and it is so expensive to recycle the urine. So I think if we extracted the water from the ground or recycled the, the seas, it will be more easier than recycling the urine. I think that. 
Yeah, you're probably right. Um, now, Egypt, uh, they don't, do they have a space program? Uh, we have a space agency, but it is not active. Uh, it is just, you know, there is no um, uh, programs or there is no inner ships. There is no, uh, there is no <laughs> something here. It is just like, um, uh, you know, what is the golden hair? Um, you know, it, it is, uh, there is no any activities in such agency, you know? Um, so we don't have uh, such the technology or such the funds to fully fund such an agency. So it must make it very challenging for you to study um, the aerospace medicine. Um, how, um, well, can you talk a little bit about those challenges and, and how you overcame them? Uh, did, do you uh, coordinate with um, uh, uh, space agencies in other countries uh, to who might have astronauts or um, maybe the UAE is an example. I think they have an astronaut as well. Um, uh, do you have some type of collaboration like this set up uh, to allow for you to um, uh, work with uh, space agencies that have astronauts? Um, yeah, I think it's very challenging to study such um, such an um, subject because uh, there is no space agency here in Egypt and we ha don't have astronauts. So uh, right now I'm working with an external collaboration in Tunisia and in uh, California, uh, USA. Uh, in under research projects, uh, that's all. But here in Egypt, no, we don't have a space agency and we don't have asteroids. It, it looks like, our, oh, there we go. Um, uh, let's see. So, yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about what your uh, career and professional plans are? Um, do, you, do you have the hope that at some point uh, Egypt's uh, space agency might become more active and uh, you'll be able to use the, the training and what you're doing um, now in, in that context? Or do you plan to maybe uh, go work um, for a space agency or, or a company in a different country that is uh, sending up astronauts. Um, well, what's your plans? Okay, see, uh, my dream, my biggest dream is to work at NASA or SpaceX because uh, I really love uh, Elon Musk. I love SpaceX and Elon Musk. Uh, right now, um, um, I haven't graduated yet. So I'm still uh, I'm still waiting till I graduate and uh, prepare a master's degree in space medicine. Uh, I hope to to travel abroad in the, and and prepare this degree. And then uh, I'm I'm gonna look in for an internship maybe at NASA or at SpaceX to participate and uh, to um, to train there. Uh, but till now, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in the research. This is what I have to do. This is what we can do. I don't have anything or I, can, I cannot do anything more than this. Uh, then research, I mean, or then uh, those projects with external collaboration. So I'm, I'm trying my best to do my best. Um, yeah, but my biggest, biggest dream, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, is to establish um, a private company in the space field. I'd like to be uh, one like Elon Musk uh, or one like, yeah, uh, or can be a businesswoman in the space uh, sector. This is what I, uh, what I dream of. <laughs> yeah, to have my own space company. Um have you ever heard of uh, Rocket Labs and Peter Beck?
have you heard of uh, Rocket Labs or uh, a person by the name? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can hear you. It froze there for a second, but I can hear you. Um, I was wondering if you were familiar with uh, Rocket Labs. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you can you hear me? I wonder if the uh, connection issues yeah, are my side or yours. Okay. Um, have you heard of uh, Rocket Labs? No. Can you tell me more about that? Yes. Uh, so, you know, there's only been uh, two countries in the world that have private companies that are capable of sending things into orbit. And you mentioned SpaceX, so that makes the United States one of them. Do you have an idea on what the other country is? Uh, I think no. Would you believe New Zealand? New Zealand, yeah, sure. <laughs> but I think, you know, that's very surprising to me that New Zealand is able to have a private space company that can launch things into orbit uh, because it's such a small country, right? And yeah. I'm thinking that if people in New Zealand uh, are able to do it, then it seems to me that people any place in the world uh, with enough uh, kind of um, enthusiasm and tenacity and, and drive could do it as well. So, I mean, I feel like you have a lot of challenges um, with regards to kind of maybe the, the legal and economic situation in, in Egypt. But um, at the same token, I don't think it's impossible either. I think it'd just be very, very, very challenging. Yeah, I think that, and it's very surprising for me that um, a country like New Zealand or an island like New Zealand have a space uh, private company. It's amazing, I think, you know, it's some sort of, um, anyone can do anything, you know, anyone can dream of anything and achieve it. Uh, nothing is impossible. Yeah, and, and for me, I have a lot of challenges. I, I have um, challenges of the social economy and uh, money and uh, nationality, a lot of things, but uh, this is what I'm dreaming of. <laughs> and do you have a lot of uh, friends or maybe family that are excited about this as well? Or do you find yourself um, kind of unique and this is more of a personal thing? Uh, my family, uh, uh, for me, I'm some, uh, I'm a little bit of a unique person because I'm the only one who is interested in space. But I have uh, my sisters, you know, uh, they, they would like to see you, by the way. Can I? Can I? Oh, yes, yes. To see you? That would be fantastic. I would love to see them too. Yeah, okay. Okay, one minute, okay? Okay. <laughs> Mariam. Hello, nice to meet you. What is your name? Mariam. Mariam. And you're interested in space yes. also? Yes. Um, yeah, she's so interested. <laughs> are, are you going to be a, a doctor or uh, are you planning to be something else? Uh, yeah, Mariam like mathematics and like physics, and it's uh, I think it's a little bit exciting that um, uh, she can get into this field very soon. I hope. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, so you're in medical school, and um, what school are you in? 
What? Oh, um, what grade are you in? Of what uh, level of school? Are you in college or high school or? Uh, me uh, or Mariam? <laughs> Mariam. Mariam, she is in the in the school. Yeah, she is in the uh, sixth grade in the school. Oh, sixth grade! Wow, and uh, already interested in in space. It would be amazing for the two of you all yeah. to get together yeah. and uh, launch the first, um, you know, people into space from Egypt. That would be like mind blowing. I think. Uh, if y'all were to make that happen. Okay. Yeah. I hope I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait for that. I hope, I hope to achieve it as soon as possible. Um, so uh, what do you all think about uh, people going back to the moon in 2024? Is this something that y'all had heard about? Yeah, I have heard about it. And uh, do you think it's a, a good thing or, um, I mean, look, what are your so thoughts? So I had, um, it's very, it will be a great step in the, yeah, I think it will be a great step in the space uh, sector and in the, in the history itself uh, to uh, do such a thing because um, it, have, it, it has been many years since we didn't uh, go to the moon um, and it needs a lot of technology, you know, a lot of uh, information, a lot of um, money <laughs> to do such thing. But I think NASA can, can do it. And um, it, it will be a great step uh, as well in the, in the science itself because uh, it will, uh, you know, enrich uh, the research field more and more and we will know more about the moon we will know more about the human space flight and uh, in the technology as a whole so yeah it, it it's very important to do uh, such a thing and to um, <laughs> to uh, make sure and to um, you know, uh, for the people who think that NASA didn't go to the moon, uh, <laughs> they will see that it will happen again, and it will be um, uh, more valuable for them. That is, uh, that is awesome. And, um, uh, you know, some people are saying, though, you know, we have the coronavirus, and we have uh, climate change, and we have poverty. And we have uh, all these problems here on Earth. And uh, why are we spending money to send a few astronauts to the moon instead of taking care of all these other problems? Well, what are your thoughts about that? What are you, sorry, can you ask again? Oh, sure. Um, some people um, are not as excited about going to the moon. They say, oh, why are we spending so much money to send some people to the moon when we have issues with um, you know, poverty and global climate change and you know, the coronavirus and this pandemic? Um, I mean, what are, what are your thoughts about that? How do we, how do it in, you know, kind of um, uh, justify um, spending the money and resources to send people to the moon uh, while we also have these other uh, issues going on. Oh, I got your question. Okay, uh, I think it's uh, many, many people see that uh, why we can spend, uh, why we will spend a lot of money in uh, traveling to, to travel to the moon, spend it uh, to uh, find solutions for uh, problems like the poverty, uh, the hungerness, the, um, the coronavirus itself. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little bit <laughs> shame uh, because 
don't know the importance of traveling to space and the importance of um, find or uh, making um, satellites to find uh, the, the satellites are very important without satellite we will not talk um, if there is no satellites we will we will not gonna talk together right now because of the GPS because of the internet because of the it 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 gives us um, internet GPS um, you know, there is no, um, uh, I mean, there is no, uh, a lot of um, knowledge, there is no uh, uh, enough knowledge uh, for those people. Um, yeah, they don't know the importance of traveling to space. I think if we increase the awareness of that, uh, of those issues, and if we told them that we are traveling to space because of um, scientific and research purposes, I think it will be very important and it will affect uh, this, <laughs> uh, this mindset. Uh, indeed, I, I think those are very good points. Now, uh, if you could, would you go to space? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, how far would you go? Would you uh, just go to like in orbit or would you take a multiple trips to the multiple week trip to the moon? Or would you uh, go as far as maybe a couple of years and go to Mars? Uh, like how how far would you go? Yeah, I think I can't um, um, get away from my family for many years or from my personal life, uh, from the luxuries of the life. I can't get rid of, of all of this. I think um, for. Uh, uh, many weeks, like traveling to the moon, maybe for one month, two months, three months. Yeah, it will be amazing and exciting and enough. <laughs> Not more. <laughs> Not more. Uh, would your sister go to the moon too? Or would your sister go to space also? Mariam, I have a plan for that. Yes, I like to go to NASA. <laughs> Yeah. What do you think it so would be like? Yes. Had it lie you mean? Well, I tell it sure. Well, I said it is in. She said just two days is enough. <laughs> <laughs> two days are enough. I understand. Um, maybe a short trip at first and see how it goes and then uh, kind of make a decision after after that. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you very much for your time. That's pretty much all the questions I have. Is there something that you wanted to talk about that we didn't get to? Uh oh. I'm oh. sorry, the network is bad, a little bit bad. Oh, yeah. no worries. Um, so that's pretty much all the questions I have. I, it's so good to meet y'all, but is there something that you wanted to talk about that we did not get to? Uh, did you have some questions for me, maybe? Um, I'd like to know uh, two things, okay? <laughs> the first, Yeah. Do you have time to make uh, a, an, an interview every day? <laughs> this is the first question. The second question, do you work for um, a, a space agency or something like that? Okay, so the first question about having time to interview somebody every day. I started this project last December and I've not missed a day yet. So I've talked to somebody every single day for the past 330 days. Um, now, originally, 
my plan was to go to people, strangers, you know, at the coffee shop or at the, the store or on the street and just go up and ask about, did you know we were going to the moon? What do you think about it? Would you go? That type of things are really short mm -hmm. questions. But in March with the whole coronavirus lockdown, I had to start doing everything virtually. And uh, then I ended up uh, setting up that uh, Calendly system where people can sign up. And I've luckily, uh, people are so nice and friendly and generous um, like you uh, to come and help me with my project. So I really appreciate it. Um, I don't work at a space agency. I've always dreamed of working at NASA or SpaceX or Blue Origin or someplace like this, but I actually work um, for a software company and this is um, my hobby, my um, passion, uh, what I like to do for fun. I have a, um, a group of people here in Houston. We get together once a month uh, to talk about the latest space news and uh, to talk about, you know, we invite a guest speaker who maybe works at NASA or works at one of these space companies to come and talk to us and um, learn a little bit more about that. And we try to kind of make people more aware of the benefits of space, but it's all um, a personal thing. Uh, none of it's um, professional. Yeah, it's amazing. You're so amazing person, by the way. And I'm so happy to meet you. <laughs> and it's it's very good thing that you you are doing what you love. You are doing um, you, uh, even uh, your work is is your passion. And the interview, the everyday interview, it is uh, one of your um, things that you can you love to do. <laughs> God bless you. Well, thank you. And it's I feel so fortunate yeah, to meet the two of y'all and yeah, see people yeah, that are yeah. also interested oh. in this too. Oh. Yeah. I, I feel so uh, fortunate uh, to have um, met both of y'all too, and to meet people that are also excited and, and interested in this topic. And I, I know that y'all both have great things in your future. And I look forward to, um, you know, uh, seeing the great things that both of y'all are going to be doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, uh, did you have anything else uh, you wanted to talk about? Well, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just, um, Wondering if uh, you what had did you say? Any, uh, did you have anything else you wanted to talk about? Hmm. Um, well, I really appreciate uh, your time, and it was so good to get to meet you, and I look forward to staying in contact. Yeah, for sure. So what do you prefer, um, uh, WhatsApp or uh, Facebook or what? Um, I use all of them. Um, you know, I have uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and uh, uh, WhatsApp uh, as well. I can send you my contact information and we can uh, stay connected. Okay, yeah, for sure. It's my pleasure. <laughs> It's my pleasure. Well, it was nice to meet you, Aya and Miriam. And I hope you'll have a good evening. And um, yes. we'll talk again soon. Okay. Yeah. I'll talk to you all later. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.